Hello guys, so this video is a part of my art material series. Basically this series just goes into the certain types of materials that I use, how I use them, different brands, where you can buy them, basically all the basics of what I know and how to use these materials and just give you generalised views on how these materials are. So this specific episode is about watercolour and if you want to go see the other types of materials that I've covered, I've done three previous videos to this series. I've done pencils, pencil crayons and markers. So I will leave a link in a card and I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go see what I have in store for this series. I'm saying this because a lot of people have subscribed over five months and the last time I did one of these videos was five months ago. So yeah, welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoy this series. Now right at the start you could actually see me colouring the skin tone with markers. This is just because of the small scale it was at and I felt really uncomfortable with colouring the skin tone with watercolour but I have done it in the past and I've just wanted to actually test out how these materials would actually work together in unison to create a picture. So I'm currently using the Kurutaki Ganzai Tambi watercolours and I decided that this would be a great time to actually give my opinion on them because I actually got them as a Christmas present from my mother and they are amazing. I really like them so far. I've been using them in unison with my Mozart watercolour brush pens and they are really cool as well. So there's different types of watercolours, there's panned watercolours and there is also tubed watercolours. Now the pans you can actually see they come in either half pans or full pans and they are actually really nice to use. You just add water and then you start using them and they're great for travel. Tubed watercolours on the other hand, they do have their advantages but if you can only afford the tubed watercolours because they're cheaper and you get more for your money, you can actually just put some in a palette and let it dry overnight and then it's pretty much like using panned watercolour so it's perfectly fine to do that. Now I'm telling you the difference between different types of watercolour, tubed and panned, because I actually have both. I have quite a lot of different brands of watercolours and some watercolours I would use for different projects and different pictures. So I would use a more pigmented palette for a very bright picture and obviously a more muted coloured palette for something more muted and more toned down from regular work. So the types of brands that I have are very different from each other. So I have the Kurutaki Ganzai Tambi, as you can see in this video. I also, earlier in the video, pulled out my Koinor Annie Linky Brilliant Watercolours set and these watercolours are like inks. They lay down like inks they have the consistency of inks, they are really amazing and I love them and they are actually a contest prize in my 3k plus contest that is still going on until the end of February when the deadline is. Other brands of watercolours that I have are Sakura Koi watercolours. I got these in my scroller box and I use them for so long after I've received these so I really like them. It's very more muted colours in that and they're very easy to mix. They've got a very different consistency to any of the other watercolours that I've tried so it's really a matter of preference definitely with consistency. I have Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolours as well now the Sakura Koi and the Winsor & Newton, I only have the travel size sets and I just buy colours whenever and whatever colours that I actually want for the palette. So yeah, they're great for travel. I travel to university and back so travel is one thing that is really important to me when it comes to my watercolours and my 
Kuro Taki Ganzai Tambis, I can't really transport very well. That's the only thing that makes me sad about my nice new watercolours is the fact that I can't travel with them very well because they come in this big palette. So Koenor actually do another type of watercolour. Now these are not the brilliant watercolours, they are actually in a stackable set so in theory they are great for travel watercolours because they are a stackable set. It's it's just really handy. The only problem is that I have with them is that they're, the way they spread is very chalky and they're not as pigmented as the brilliant watercolours that they do. So I'm not a real big fan of those ones but I do have them just in case I would like to use them in the future. And they were pretty cheap for how many watercolours I actually got in that set. So whether I'll use them for a cheap art supply challenge in the future to compare against Kurutaki or something, I don't know what I'll do with those, but I'll probably end up using them at some point or at least giving them away to somebody who will actually use them. The last type of watercolours I actually own are tubed watercolours from the brand Creelando and I got them from Lidl, which is a German supermarket here in the UK. Obviously, I think it'll probably be in Germany as well, since it's German. They are really good watercolours. I really like them. I've used them for my Undertale watercolour series, which I'll also have linked in a card and down in the description if you want to go see that. So people always ask me what my favourite medium is and it is actually watercolour. The reason for this is because it makes me a lot more patient as an artist. Being an artist is sometimes very impatient for me. I want a quick snappy result constantly and watercolour actually makes me slow down, take notice of things and actually just do my work properly and not rush ahead and just ruin everything. I would actually recommend using watercolours with a water brush. Now what these are, they are brushes but the barrels you can actually fill with water and it makes it a lot easier and a lot quicker to do this. Water brushes are amazing for travel because it means you don't have to carry around a pot of water everywhere you go because the water is actually inside of the brush. Most artists actually recommend using the Pentel Aquash water brushes, but personally I would recommend the Mudder water brushes. You get a lot more brushes for your money, because on Amazon they actually sell for relatively the same amount of money. The difference being though that Aquash brushes are a set of three and Mudder brushes is a set of six. So you're getting double the amount of water brush for your money. So if you want to actually get more for your money, I would recommend Mudder more so than the Aquash brushes. So now you can see me actually adding in some gold details with some Winsor & Newton drawing ink. Now, I hopefully will have an episode on drawing ink eventually. Currently, they're very new to me with drawing inks. I know how to use black drawing ink, but I haven't really experimented with colour yet. So I really need to experiment on those before I even think about doing an episode on inks. So I know I'm rushing ahead just a little bit, but I'm going to be talking about the Mozart watercolour brush pens. These are very similar to the Zig Clean colour brush pens. So basically you can lay down a colour and then you can actually dissolve it. So they are water soluble and I kind of do that with Loki's shadow. What I do is I lay down some grey and I actually mix it with some yellow in the background so I can actually dissolve the colour and actually make it so it looks like a shadow and it's it's really cool. I actually really like using these pens. So these brush pens are actually really nice for coloured line art. I prefer them over my Settler Triplus fine liners to actually do coloured line art because they actually fix a lot of problems because I remember when I was first trying out my new watercolours, the Gansai Tambi, and I thought I'd ruined a sketch that I really liked and I really didn't like the result of that, 
those watercolors on their own but when I fixed it with the watercolor brush pens I was so happy with the result. I loved it to the end of the world and back. I just loved it completely. And I could not praise those brush pens enough for what they did to that picture. It's just incredible. So the way I actually use watercolour is I do the line art last. This prevents smudging. I'm left-handed and smudging is incredibly easy for me to do because... Most people, when they when they draw or write, they go left to right. And this, for me, is an issue because I go left to right, but being left-handed, it just smudges everything everywhere. So really do make sure your watercolour is dry before you decide to use the brush pens on top to go for your line art. So another thing to talk about when using watercolour is definitely the paper. The paper is probably the most important part and probably the very first step that you need to take for your watercolours before even buying watercolours. Get some good paper. The watercolour paper that I use is the Dela Rowney hot pressed watercolour paper. It is a £140 paper and I currently have the A3 jumbo stack of paper and it comes in 50 sheets which equals out to about 100 A4 sheets and it's so much cheaper to do it that way because I don't just use it for my YouTube work, I also use it for my illustration degree because it's a lot easier to work with and also some of my work has to be A3 or bigger than A4 so it needs to go on A3. So overall it's actually just down to personal preference. I would say actually experiment with a range of different watercolours because they all have their own unique advantages and disadvantages and you can compare them however you want to. I actually think the most value for money set that you can get is the Cole Inor Annie Linky Brilliant Watercolours. They come in a set of 12 and they are beautiful to lay down. So much pigmentation. I have not been paid to say this. These are my favourite watercolours and they're actually a contest prize in my 3k plus contest. So if you want to enter the contest, I'll also leave a link down in the description below. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, feel free to drop it a like. You, you can do that if you want to, if you like. <laughs> I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.